Once upon a time, in another body, a couple million sperm began a great quest to find the princess at the end of the fallopian tube. In a momentous journey, only one of the sperm cells would be able to claim success and take the beautiful princess's hand. The journey was grueling. Many lost their way, or just lost their get up and go. But the bravest, most handsome prince of all found the egg princess. He swept her off her feet, and the two of them fused together to create a new human being. As they fused, unlike many unions of today, the two cells shared everything. Each contributed one set of all the genes necessary to create this new human being. Their precious gift was wrapped in a beautiful purple boa. Under the guidance of the regulatory genes, the process of putting together the new human began. The regulator sent some cells to create the skeleton. Others were sent to create the layer of skin to wrap everything in. The brainy ones were sent to create the body's control center, while others were allocated to the other major organs to ensure that the body's metabolism would run smoothly. As with all things, some cells didn't get the cushy jobs and were to be condemned to cells that would be despised, maybe even forcefully removed via liposuction. Our story is about a very special cell, a femme fatale, Mademoiselle Masson, who would grow up to be a fabulous dancer. She had presence and poise and grace. But every time she performed, well, a few feathers fell off the boa. Now, initially, it wasn't too noticeable. The boa just got a little bit shorter, but she was still able to perform. But the day came when the boa, well, it was too short. She could no longer strut her stuff. She was no longer a strong, beautiful muscle with power. Madame had become old. As a muscle, she was weak. Small things like opening the pickle jar and getting out of the chair became a challenge. Every time our DNA is replicated, we lose one feather. It has to be this way to protect the DNA. If it didn't happen, the DNA would simply unwind completely. So when the cell receives the DNA package, the package has very special ends called teleomeres. These teleomeres determine how many times the cell will be able to divide. Once it reaches that limit, well, the cell may die or simply limp along, doing its best to perform. Size hmm, really does matter. Now, there's good news and bad news. How many times your cells are going to divide is programmed right at the beginning. If you're programmed to go 50 rounds, you will look and feel like you are 90 in the shade way earlier than if you're programmed to go 100 rounds. Teleomere length is connected with longevity. And the people in the 100 club, they got good genes.
centenarians are no more angelic when it comes to lifestyle than the rest of us. But genes are not everything. Your genes interact with the environment. So what you do can influence the length of your telomeres. You can make it worse, but you can also make it better. The secret? Oxidative stress. It's the oxidative stress which creates the damage. So the fix, well, you need to create less oxidative stress. The million dollar question is how? What fires up the furnace? Well, the human body is very complex and there are lots of switches, many of which are not under your direct control. But there are a few that you can control. I call them the seven big spoons. Getting these right will help create better body chemistry and better health. So what are they? Well, the first, you need to dial down stress. No surprise here. But your definition of stress needs to extend beyond just the psychosocial traumas of day-to-day -day life. You need to include your physical environment as well as the biochemistry going on in your body. Next, you need to get enough sleep and get it at the right time. Sleeping winds up the clocks that run your body chemistry. If you're not sleeping enough or you're sleeping at the wrong time, these clocks get out of sync. Next, you need to watch your thinking. Thoughts are far more tangible than they appear. A thought can release a flood of happy chemicals or an avalanche of stress chemicals. Next, you want to rein in insulin. Insulin is a bossy hormone. You don't want it to be in charge all the time. Next, <laughs> you want to watch which bugs are hanging out with you. Science is discovering who is who in the zoo really matters. <laughs> and then, well, cells talk to one another. The language that they use is, well, cosinoides. You can bite into their conversations if you know a little icosanoides. Icosanoides is all about balancing the omega-3s and omega-6s. The last big spoon is you need to increase your vitamin D. You can swallow some pills by doing it the way Mother Nature intended. By basking in the sun will bring additional health benefits. So, there you have it. The recipe for better body chemistry. <laughs> Did you like the video? If so, subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. If you want more great resources to create better body chemistry for you and your family, visit our website and sign up for our newsletter. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dr. Sandy wishing you better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference.